Hello and welcome to Amusement Sparks. This is the theme park design show, and today we are talking about Card Captor Sakura. If you look over there, that's some very Japanese art right there. <laughs> beautiful. Um, we are here at beautiful Ohio Con in Columbus, Ohio, and things are awesome. And there is also a guy standing next to me right here. This is Joe from Brave World Anime. Why don't you say something? Hey, thank you guys for coming out to this panel. This is my second panel at OhioCon, and I'll be doing one more later today. I've been doing panels for about five years now, including about the last four or so at OhioCon. So he's pretty much a pro at this. So if <laughs> it goes wrong, it's his fault. Definitely not a pro. Um, <laughs> so on this show, we design theme parks, and usually they're kind of imaginary. Obviously, we're not like actually building things right now, so... The limitations of like money and construction supplies and staffing and all those sad things about reality don't apply at all. <laughs> right? Yeah. So it's all like in our heads and in our hearts and it's a beautiful thing. And because of that, the lack of restrictions, we usually get pretty crazy with the things that we do in these theme parks. Usually they're like pretty next generation, like things maybe we couldn't technically do today, but we can still like design them and plan them and whatnot. Yeah, yes. thinking through some ideas for this, if we did this in a real life environment, it would take a lot of space and a ton of money. So it may not be the most like financially wise investment. <laughs> That's so true. But um, we're going to be talking about card captors if you've watched the like U US version or card captor Sakura, if you know, you're one of those. Um, I think the Japanese version is better in general. This show is really cool across the board but the Japanese version is a little bit more progressive like with the relationships and stuff it's kind of interesting there's some some interesting LGBTQ plus ish things going on from the series that's from the mid to late 90s which is pretty cool oh, wow. especially for a kids show starring fourth graders it's interesting <laughs> how many um, yeah more progressive relationships happen in the show it's it's cool I'd recommend watching it yeah, and I've only ever seen the Japanese version, minus some clips of the English dub version. I watched it all on DVD years and years ago, and definitely prefer the Japanese names. So anytime I say a character's name, if you're only familiar with the dub, I apologize. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I get all confused about the name. So we might go back and forth, we might not. We'll see. Card Captor Sakura. If you haven't seen it, it's awesome. Um, it's about a girl. Um, can you guess what her name is? Sakura. Sakura, very good. good. Uh, and she is a card captor. What that means is, bless you, she is tasked with capturing all of these magical cards. They're called the cloud cards. They're created by this, oh yeah, here's a, an example. Um, they're created by this really cool sorcerer who's been dead for a long time, but his fingerprints are still felt all over the series. His name is Cloud Reed. And uh, the cards, basically each one includes like this very powerful magic. Cloud Reed's thing is he kind of combined like Eastern magic with Western magic. And the result was this like super powerful magician y guy. And he contained all these different like powerful elemental forces in these cards. Yeah. And it's a, yeah, the, I like the magical parts of the show. It's like very well done how they script out all the magic in the show. And there's, they have different powers based on the different cards. So we're going to kind of go into more detail with that here shortly. Yeah, um, so Cloud Reed was this guy years and years and years ago who's been dead for a long time. And he has kind of, he has like different reincarnations. He kind of has two reincarnations at a time and it gets a little bit confused. He also, also created other beings to kind of take power over these cards, such as these two adorable plush characters you see <laughs> in front of you. Um, so he is kind of super powerful and kind of has like four different versions of him that are still alive in this series, which is kind of strange. But um, basically, one of them is Sakura's dad. He's kind of a reinterpretation or a reincarnation of Cloud Reed, which is kind of weird. So basically, Sakura was destined before she was born to be the one tasked with capturing all these Cloud cards. But then in the US dub, she accidentally releases them all. And so then she has to do it because she caused the problem. So it's a little confusing if she was chosen or if it was an accident. But either way, she's the main one in the series who has to go around and collect all these magical cards yeah and cloud reed actually makes appearances in other clamp shows um he's well subasa has a big tie-in with card captor sakura and then there's um holic 
which also had which ties directly in with the Subasa universe. But all of the clamp shows there's a connection, and a lot of that connection is based around Cloud Reed. So it's very interesting how they design that. I haven't figured out all the, the entire connection, like how like shows like Angelic Lair fit into this world, but they all show up in Subasa. <laughs> It's so cool how they've done that. Like, it's really cool when a creator like has Easter eggs and references to their other works, and this one is like much more explicit. Like, uh, I think this will do it. If I click on that, that's Kyle Reed, and like, I don't know. It's cool. Not only has he impacted all over the world of card capture Sakura, but also all of these other Clamp produced shows. It's pretty sweet. So, yes, on the the TV show, the inciting incident is basically that. Sakura finds the the book containing all the cloud cards right here, um, and she opens it and accidentally like spills them everywhere and they scatter into the wild. So in this park, I think we need to make our park guests be card captors because it's not really fun to go to a place and then watch a fourth grader run around and do a bunch of stuff. Like that's not really fun or immersive. So ideally, we could task all these people, everyone who goes to the park, with being a card capture as well. So I feel like in the like storyline of the park. It needs to be basically the cloud cards have you know escaped again. I don't know if soccer is like taken prisoner or something, or she's frozen <laughs> in time. There's so many cool things you can do. She needs our help. She needs yeah. our help, right? <laughs> it's up to us to like find her and get all of the cloud cards. Um, I believe there are 70 cloud cards. That is correct. There are 70. 70. There's and seven there's a lot. So there's gonna be 70 attractions. That's yes. our game plan. Yeah. Um, the tail end of this presentation should be us trying to like rapid fire as many of these cloud cards as we can get because there's a ton of them. Um, and this show is really cool. Like it really appealed to me as a little kid who was like obsessed with like Pokemon and Digimon and all that kind of stuff. Because it's basically like there's 70 legendary Pokemon and there's only one of each. It's <laughs> way more fun than just like there's a world filled with you know millions of these things. It's like no, there's 70 of them. They're all super powerful creations like it's there's one that's called power like i don't know they're they're so different in the the range of powers that they all have but they're all really really fascinating and and ancient and whimsical and mysterious and <gasps> it's awesome it's really good there's some interesting designs like there's some that have like a very specific form and then there's some that are just more like elemental or based around certain things so there's a very good diversity of cards which is one of the interesting aspects of the show is like, it's really hard to think of, like, like the maze card, for example, is a good example. It's, like, a really specific card, and there really isn't that much functional use for it outside of them capturing it. <laughs> but then there's other cards, like Windy, which has more just... It has a dis defined, like, form, but at the same point, it can be used for various purposes. True. And in the show, Sakura uses Windy all the time. It gets way overplayed. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully your experience in the park would be different. And... If, if the goal of the series is, you know, to capture all 70 cards, maybe that's kind of the goal of the park, is, like, each park guest, through repeat visits, is trying to get the full collection of all 70, and then you get access to, like, a, you know, post-game area where, you're like, you've done it, you completed this, here's, like, an additional little story element, or yeah. here's a little trinket or whatever. What's the most powerful card? Most powerful card, holy moly. Um, <laughs> to be annoying, I would say power. Because <laughs> there's one called The Power. That's just annoying of me. But it's, I don't know, it depends on the user in a way. Well, I mean, I was going to say, I don't think there's one, but I would say the element cards are the most Yeah, yeah. there's the four yeah. elements, the four basic four elements. elements. Yeah. And that's like the most, like, you know, kind of ancient magic. Um, a lot of these aren't as timeless. Like, not every culture in the world has a mythological interpretation of these, whereas, you know, Earthwind, was it? Fire and water, and yeah. Those are pretty universal among human society as being really cool things. Uh, yeah, one thing that we might want to talk about before we totally get off of the like Sakura thing and totally start focusing on the park itself, um, she has some interesting people in her life. Um, oh, I, yes. there. Um, <laughs> you got two of them. Huh? Yeah, oh, we got two of them. <laughs> um, Joe, why don't you introduce these two characters? So in the picture we have well, obviously Sakura, but we also have Tomoyo, who is Sakura's best friend and cousin. But yeah. she also has a crush on Sakura yeah, in the Japanese version. Yeah, she's also got a major crush. It's, it's a, they're in fourth grade. They'll figure it out. Yeah, <laughs> she's obsessed with filming Sakura, and she's also obsessed with designing um, outfits for Sakura. That's kind of what we see in this particular GIF here. Is there are 
she has like what like 50 different outfits for sakura so for cosplayers this is like it's the amazing. perfect show because there's like 50 or 60 outfits and there are so many outfits. Th- yeah there are certain ties you could make to like sailor moon which is another magical girl series i loved as a kid but this one's so much cooler because they don't just reuse the inf- the like animation of like you know what mm-hmm. sailor moon's outfit looks like every single episode every episode she has a different outfit it's amazing <laughs> there's always something to look at i don't know it's fascinating really cool stuff and then there's that little flying guy. Yep, then we have Karo-chan, which we also have sitting up here. Probably gonna knock him over at some point. <laughs> but yeah, he is, do you wanna introduce him? Uh, yeah, so I guess he's he's kind of based on Cer- Cerebus? I can't remember, Cerebus? Yeah. The like three-headed legendary dog thing. Uh, it's kind of weird, because he doesn't really look like that. He's also awesome. <laughs> like the sun god. Yeah, yeah, he basically has power over half the cloud deck, the, the half that's associated with the sun. He could turn into this really big, scary cat monster thing, um, but he just has this cute little chibi form that he usually rolls around in. Oh, <laughs> he's so cute. He's like a, a bear with a kitten body and then like baggy pants, kind of like scraggy and scrafty if you like Pokemon. It's adorable. I love his little baggy legs. Super cute. And um, he also has a companion not only in the plush form, but in the show as well, who has dominion over the the moon half of the deck. Um, this character is called either Spinner or Spinel, depending on which version you're enjoying. But I think these two would make amazing mascot characters. Like, I hypothesize that's where the design came from, because it looks like a person in there with, like, normal human arms and human legs and a really big chibi head. So they're adorable. But they're also super powerful. Um, this guy... <laughs> Lee, he's very cool. It, he also has power over those kind of four core elemental magics. Um, and his his involvement with the cloud cards kind of varies depending on which version you're watching. In the US dub, he's considered to be a, cl- a card captor, whereas I don't think he technically is in the Japanese version. He's just a cool um, descendant of Cloud Reed who has cool elemental powers. But yeah. he's basically a rival to Sakura. So I think having both of them involved in the storyline would be kind of cool, especially if you know their eventual future uh, relation. Yeah, his personality changes a lot during the course of the show. He starts off as being the typical, like, bratty, almost shonen-ish type character in a shoujo, but he's a very well-developed character throughout, so it's a very good progression for him. I agree completely, and it, it's cool that this show balances between shonen and shoujo very well. Like, I feel like it appeals to all kinds of different people. Uh, there's a lot of action, a lot of adventure. They basically cover every single superhero power in a different episode <laughs> of the show with the same core characters who have relationships that are interesting and evolving and character development. And it's an amazing show. I just super love it. Um, I don't have a picture, but there are some interesting things about Sakura's brother. Um, one of the ongoing gags is that he works like a million part-time jobs. So we were thinking like all the little shops and things could have like someone cosplaying as him. And it's just like, there's like a little story element. He's always there. It's like, where's Waldo? Yeah. <laughs> That's really great. Have any questions? Ask Koya. <laughs> and, I don't know which one. <laughs> one of the other things I really love about him that might be fun to have these characters have that trait as well in the park is he makes up rules to kind of mess with his younger sister like they're on a boat at one point and she's like leaning over looking at the water and he's like if you do that a shark will jump out and eat you and she's like scared and runs away but um or like they're getting on an airplane and he's like you have to take off your shoes before you get on the airplane right and so she takes off her shoes and like he's totally lying so (laughs) having some some people who work at the park make up fake rules would be really funny i think just as an engaging way to like mess with your paying customers. <laughs> that would be a very amusing aspect. <laughs> right. It's supposed to be amusing, right? It's amusement sparks, right? Cool. With, with Toya, though, the other thing is, like, it's interesting how his personality is. He, like, he obviously, like, knows about, like, Sakura's secrets and everything, but he's good at, like, hiding the fact that he knows from Sakura. Even in the most recent series, like, he's still hiding that fact, the fact that he knows. So... He's definitely an amusing character and one that, again, gets very interesting progression throughout. Uh, one other thing I want to talk about, there's kind of like this project introduced in one of the first episodes where um, she's making a documentary about like the life of the average fourth grader. 
And so she picked Sakura, you know, the most average fourth grader. Yeah, totally average. Um, who actually has a lot of talents outside of basically being a superhero. So there's always this kind of documentary thing going on, which is a cool storytelling device of like, why is this all being filmed? <laughs> it's for this documentary. Um, but that might be kind of a cool little mini game or like quest that people could do in this theme park is like, if you see Sakura, try to like get some footage of her doing whatever she's doing. Um, and there's actually a video game where you do something very similar to that. It's, you know, Japan only, but you're basically filming Sakura going around doing her stuff, which could be kind of fun. Like if you had a job at a theme park, it's maybe more engaging than just being at a theme park. So you know, or like Pokemon yeah. Snap with Sakura. Like, <laughs> it, I don't know. I'm like, I've never heard of this. This is news to me. It seems really <laughs> similar. And then similarly strange, there's also, I don't know if this will work. There's also a Card Captor Sakura Tetris game. So I don't know if we want to have an arcade somewhere or like, I just think that's really funny and interesting. But evidently there's actually a story in this game as well. It's not just like pictures of Sakura on top of a Tetris game. It's like you actually progress through a storyline, which is really fun for a puzzle game. So maybe an arcade, I don't know, something like that would be kind of fun. One of Sakura's uh, main tools is the ceiling wand or the staff. <laughs> um, yeah, so if we could, I don't know if every park guest wants to have one of these, because in the series it's only her that has it. But basically, <laughs> you know, it's a, a tool that lets her kind of manifest her powers and to seal the cards. Another thing would be cool is just to have some, like, like a museum type place where people can just wander through and see the different like artifacts that are relevant to the show. So like the different staff she uses, you can have different. Yes. Yeah. The outfits would be super cool. And like, you know, have different versions. So like not everyone has to wear a dress if they don't want to, but having all this variety of design of a wardrobe would be sweet. Yeah. Gender swap versions would be really cool. There's some cards she captures with just like her normal school uniform, which always upsets Tomoyo. But then in most cases, like, she will have specific outfits. And it's funny how sometimes those outfits are, like, pre-designed and then fit perfectly for the card she's capturing. <laughs> it is interesting. It seems like Tomoyo might be in on it once in a while. <laughs> like, how did she know this was going to be the, like, Alice in Wonderland-ish episode? Yeah, that's a good example. There's one in the, in the nuclear card arc as well. There's, like, one where it's, like, the outfit she designs, like, ahead of time is perfectly suited for the card she's capturing somehow. And this show totally does hold up. If you haven't seen it, I would recommend either catching the new series, uh, the Clear Card series, or going back to the original. The animation is still pretty sweet. Um, yeah, you're definitely going to want to watch the original before you watch Clear Card because it's a clear, pretty clear progression in terms of the story. It's not like a remake or anything. It is a direct sequel from where the second movie actually ends at. Exactly. Um, let's see. So one of the things we could get into is talking about the, the cloud cards, but... Basically, I feel like they should be not just a bunch of attractions, but it should kind of lead to an actual progression of the storyline. Like, it's easy to kind of halfway do theming, and then it's just like, oh, and then here's all the roller coasters, and you get it. Just go walk around. But, like, I think the idea of being able to, like, actually capture the cards as you go through would be really cool. If each person is, like, amassing their own deck, mm -hmm. that'd be super awesome. Do, like, passport style, where they get, like, a booklet in the beginning and have, like, rides oh, and that's stamp, cute. and, like, at the shop. Yeah. Stuff. That's really cool. Yeah. I personally want the physical cards, but yeah, having something else that's not easy to like go flying on a roller coaster is a good idea. You could either buy them or you could go through and do the whole stamp book yeah. and then you trade the stamp book in for the That's cards. super cool. I, I also in the show, she really it's it's in a way almost like Pokemon. Like you have to use your existing team to capture this new thing. So there's kind of like a rock paper scissors type of element to it, um, where you need to pick a card to capture a different card. So I kind of like the progression of like, you know, you start out with a certain card and then you have to find one that you could manage to capture with that. So I don't know if there's a specific progression we want to have where like once you have the windy card that allows you to capture these 30 different cards or something. I don't know. So you can't just go in any random order and just get the most powerful card right at the beginning. You have to kind of build up a team first. Might be kind of interesting to have like a progression. I don't know if that's frustrating or annoying or how much, <laughs> how simple we should make it, but. That's something I would like, feeling that progression of like, I can't beat this thing yet, and then coming back in an hour and beating it. Like, I love that feeling. That would be an interesting way of approaching it. I've never seen that like done with like an amusement park. Really. Yeah, so no, me neither. So it would definitely be a unique way to sell the park as like, you have to actually progress through a story. Totally, and I know this is kind of a weird episode because we're talking about all this stuff at the front end before we actually design the theme park, 
But it's like there are so many, you know, 70 attractions we're aiming to put in here. So we're kind of making like the outline first in a way, which is not usually how the show functions. But thank you for bearing with us. <laughs> um, cool. Is there anything else we need to talk about before we get into the main thing? Um, no, I think we covered most of the, yeah. the basics. There's really one or two little things I'd like to say first that might be cool, like storytelling or kind of scavenger hunty type of deals. Um, in the show, there's a, a store that kind of sells knockoff cloud cards but then there's one actual cloud card in there so that might be kind of fun if you go in there just to buy souvenirs and you find this really like unique story element you know like if someone picks up that card an alarm goes off or whatever and then like <laughs> the shop just gets totally destroyed like something that you would see at like uh, the wizarding world of harry potter or something like that that's just triggered by a customer picking up one object everything just goes crazy i think it'd be super fun that would definitely be a very good <laughs> It would definitely keep people alert and <laughs> yeah, it'd be a unique shopping experience. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, what did I do? What happened here? Oh uh, yeah, cool. So let's let's get into it. Let's dive into some of those sweet sweet cloud cards. So one thing I wanted to say is, well, kind of the way I wanted to think about it was starting with the beginning of the park and just kind of when we one thing it was we talked about kind of is just having the mascot characters up front, so kind of like a Disney World type attraction where. You enter the park, you paid your admission, and one of the first things you're going to be greeted with is our mascot characters, Caro, Caro and Spinal. So I that, love that. They're so cute, and it'd be fun to get your picture taken with them and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Something for the kids and the adults. Yep. <laughs> but then, yeah, after, we, after you get through the entrance, you've seen the mascots, then there's going to be maybe more information in terms of what your overall objective is for the park, in terms of capturing the 70 cards. So there'll be maybe guides up there to give you instructions on what you need to do, whether that's like somebody dressed as Sakura or somebody else from the show. I don't know if there's a good example you can think of, but who would be a good guide for them to... I mean, I would say Lee, because like yeah. if Sakura's been taken or whatever, um, then you need someone else who's like already on the quest to save her. So Lee might be a good choice or or her brother or... Yeah, there's, there's many other characters that are heroic and equally mm -hmm. skilled, I would say. Um, yeah. Some of these we've already kind of brainstormed a little bit, but as we go through, if you, you see one that, that you're like, oh, I have an idea for that, feel free to raise your hand or social media it or whatever. It'll be okay. And I kind of did it in a different, like when, when I approached it looking at the cards, I kind of broke it out into a few categories. So I have like just like regular attractions, which is just going to be like venues and s such, um, food stalls, just traditional rides, roller coasters, and even a water park. So I kind of broke the cards out into that way when I was designing, when I was like thinking of how I would design it. But there's other ways you can approach it because there are, each card is kind of tied to an elemental card. So we could group the park that way, but it gets more complicated because I don't know the exact breakdown of which cards are tied to which other, which elementals. It's yeah, not always exactly clear. <laughs> like which of the four main elements is illusion. What? Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. um, so I don't know, one, one maybe like way of structuring the story to kind of differentiate, like let's say you're just there to treat it like a theme park, like you don't care at all about card captures or whatever, then you should still be able to enjoy this. Or if you're a diehard, you know, season pass holder, you should also be able to have like a progression from day to day. So maybe we could have like different um, <sighs> objectives. You know, one of them is to capture 10 cloud cards before you leave. Mm -hmm. One of them is to get all 70. One of them is to get like the sun half of the deck or the moon half of the deck. Yeah. We could have like different little, you know, stories that, that lead you down each of those paths, depending on how hardcore you are. Yeah. No, I like that idea. Cool. Um, so starting with the nothing. Uh, the <laughs> no, it's not going to be that over. I was going to say, think of, if we're going to be going one by one, it's going to take a little bit too much time. And I do not have 70 rides yes. picked out 70 yet. attractions is a lot. And um, luckily, construction doesn't start for a few more years. So we, <laughs> we have time to figure this out. A few of these I do have. I had thought of some ideas. The one that idea that I, I think April and I kind of came up with when we were talking was for like the dark and the light cards. They're kind of tied together in the show. Like when she captures them, they're together. But the one idea we had was to kind of make it like a twin roller, twin type roller coaster. But in the dark half, it's going to be completely enclosed, whereas the light half would be more open. So I thought that would be an interesting way of approaching those two cards since they're really closely tied. That's really cool. And the mirror, honestly, could even add to some kind of split coaster like that. 
um, you know, even if, as simple as doing a forwards version and a backwards version, like, oh, there's your mirror, whatever. Like, you could make kind of dumb ones for any of these, but we want to make interesting ones. <laughs> um, some of them are maybe a little too abstract, like right off the bat, such as the nameless card and the hope. Yeah, maybe some a little, of them are a little difficult too weird. Yeah, what do you say? You know those things at fun houses where, like, you don't know where you're going? Yeah. yeah. Mirror. All the mirrors? Yeah. yeah. Like, if you find the right path, you get, like, that card. That's super cool, like actually. That that's how you could like defeat the mirror is to make it through. Yeah, oh, that's perfect. Um, the um, cool. other more traditional cards are going to be Fiery, which is one of the elemental cards. And when we were talking about this before the panel, it was kind of, and when April and I were talking about it too, it's going to be more like a pyrotechnic show or like fireworks or something of that nature. Because I don't think we want to like make our guests like go through fire. I figured that's going to be a bad <laughs> idea. Like we kind of don't want to get sued. It's an, it's an imaginary amusement park, but we also do want to consider... The legal of ramifications our of our ideas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because someone could go build this and then sue us because we yeah. came up with the idea. For the fire, yeah, I think that doing like a pyrotechnic show would be really cool. For a lot of these, you could kind of do like live theatrical reenactments of the episode, um, especially for the more dangerous ones, like like the fiery, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And then Wendy, I think the one I came up with for Wendy was just kind of like how. It's definitely one of the cards. We, I always wanted to use, like, make sure we at least use the four elemental cards, and like those are gonna be your most important attractions. And for that, I was just thinking of one of those like skyline rides, like where you basically it kind of overlooks the whole park, and just overall it feels like a good idea. It's, it's not really meant to be like an attack card, so you don't want it to be like overly aggressive. And yeah, love it. That's cool. Another thing that might be interesting is if you can only get access to certain attractions or rides if you have a card that could defeat that card. And again, it's that whole rock, paper, scissors thing. I don't know how complicated we want to get with it, but it might be cool if there's kind of exclusive mm, attractions that you can only get to once you've kind of earned a ticket. Any well, other comments on these eight cards? We ready to move through? I think we're good. Yep. The so, watery could certainly be a water attraction. Yeah, that one was pretty... I was definitely thinking water slide with that one. It was definitely one. Of, it was the first one I put in the water park side of, the, <laughs> of my breakdown. Wow. So that one, some of them really are really easy. Like, for example, the maze card. It's like, okay, I don't really have to think about what I'm going to do with the maze card. It's going to be a maze. <laughs> the earthy one, um, I got, I'll give April credit again because I think she came up with this one. But she was suggesting like a rock wall attraction. So that'd be kind of cool. That's legit. I like uh, the idea of the arrow being one of those like zero to 60 kind of coasters, like a super fast launch. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I like that. Uh, the return could be, I was thinking like a pirate ship kind of thing, like one of those attractions that just kind of goes back and forth, like it goes away and returns. That works. Mm -hmm. I like that. I had one for the time. The time is one of those that I struggled with. The time, the one I was thinking of, is doing like a ride, like just like one of the spinning rides where it goes like really fast forward or really fast backwards, and you don't know what it's going to do. It might be neat if it looked like a clock and it was something you could see from across the park as well. So like there's just like a giant clock that's actually an attraction. Yeah. That'd be kind of fun. That'd be cool. Yeah. The Create's kind of an interesting one. Um, it could be something where it's maybe rearrangeable a little bit. I don't think this should be a roller coaster necessarily, no. but it could be some kind of uh, experience. What's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, you make you make a tool or you make like yeah, some kind of like accessory or something. That's cool. Awesome. I don't even know what the Libra is. I don't know anything about the Libra. <laughs> it wasn't used. Yeah. yeah. I know very little of that. We're going to skip that one for now. So if you have any ideas for the Libra, send it to the Twitter feed. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Some of these are so strange. Like, I get where most of the names, like, the ideas for these came from, but then some of them are like, what were they thinking about when they picked the through, for example? Um, the through could definitely be some kind of tunnel-y kind of thing. Uh, either, maybe it could be like an escape room as well, where your goal is to kind of get through some kind of obstacle, and you have to, like, you know, move puzzle pieces and... Those of you who haven't done escape rooms, please go do them. They're amazing. <laughs> um, but there's so many of these that would make really cool escape rooms. Even if it's kind of based on the scenario from the TV show, we could kind of reenact it. And, like, you guys have to figure out your way out of here. Yeah, the one we had for the through that April came up with, I'm giving April all the credit because she came up with most of the ideas for some of these cards. Thank you. But she suggested it kind of be like a magic show, so another type of attraction. Yeah. And just because we do have an escape room one on here later, but... Cool. The shadow you could do all kinds of cool stuff with. I've been thinking about like theatrical um, 
I just I really like playing with with shadow and lighting and stuff. Um, I think that you could do some really cool illusion magic kind of stuff. So maybe the shadow, the illusion, some of the others could kind of combine together to make a magic show. Yeah, not like that the idea. The erase as well. Yeah. Um, for the fly, we were thinking that could be like a monorail kind of thing, or just a roller, a flying roller coaster yeah. where you're suspended. Um, one of the the tools that Sakura uses a lot is the fly card with her uh, wand. It kind of turns into like a kind of broomstickish type of thing that she can fly around on. So it might be kind of cool if we have like a, a seating arrangement that's like you're sitting on that. It doesn't seem comfortable, but it would be <laughs> immersive at least. Hmm. The sword seems dangerous. Yeah, it's another uh, one that seems... Show. Yeah, live show, sword swallowers, something like that. I like it. Stabbing through the box, yeah. The bubbles could be something at the uh, the water park area. I don't know. I, I always thought it'd be funny if, like, a water park, someone just dumped a bunch of, you know, bubble bath stuff in there. <laughs> it would be so chaotic, but it'd be really fun. The twin could easily be a twin coaster. Yeah. That's... Yes. <laughs> And obviously the wave can go at the water park. Yeah. That would be either the wave pool. Yeah. Love wave pools. Uh, yeah. And we'll come back to the wave pool on another card as well. But that would definitely work there. Um, hmm. uh, flower one was definitely one I thought of as just like an attraction, as some type of like garden attraction, garden. something for non-coaster fans like myself. Yeah. You need to have, <laughs> have a, just kind of a pretty area to just kind of walk around and like relax and eat some food or whatever. So the flower could definitely be a really cool garden. Ooh, that's pretty cool. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, I think that the dash, kind of uh, like the arrow, could be just a really cool, really fast, high-speed roller coaster. Yeah, that one's definitely gonna have to be a speed coaster because the whole point of the dash is that it makes the user go faster, and that's what actually shows up in card captors. The change is a card I really wish was explored more in the series, and I can think of absolutely nothing for it in a theme park. It it has the power of basically tra changing people's like trading bodies, like switching two people's bodies out. How do you yeah. do that on a... Uh... <laughs> we have people with ideas, so... <laughs> kind of like, like the Funhouse suggestion, you know, like those mirrors that make you look like somebody else or like yeah. nearby. And it could even be a, a kind of like a high-tech sort of thing, like those like Snapchat filter kind of thingies, where it's like you walk up to one side of this mirror and your friend walks up to the other and it just like swaps your bodies out. It's just like a VR headset. You like see a mirror through the VR headset, like, well, I'm different. It's actually synchronized with another person. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. That's a really cool idea. You're looking through their visor <laughs> on their camera. And looking through your that would be so cool. That's a really neat idea. That's next level. And the storm works well in many different ways. Like, that just sounds like a cool roller coaster. I was thinking it might be a cool kind of thing to, like, a variation in the water park, maybe, where it, things just get all choppy and scary. Like, I don't know. Well, I was going to say, during the, um, at the, I think it's the Cleveland Zoo, they have, like, the rainforest attraction, and they actually, ha like, have, like, simulated rainforest storms and stuff in Whoa. the zoo. I love that. Uh, the glow, I love. I think that making anything glowy is a really, really cool variation of it. And this could come out at night. Um, I kind of forget why we talked about this, but we talked about glowing at one point when we were first planning this out. It'd be cool if, at night, just all the attractions start glowing all of a sudden. It's like... The glow is like, you know, running wild or whatever, and things are just all pretty and Tron looking. Uh, yeah, the way you suggested it was more like when we talked about it originally, it was that like whenever whenever somebody captures their 70, whenever everybody, yeah. somebody captures a 70th card, like there would be like a certain event that would occur at that particular moment. So it'd be, it could be a unique experience because maybe not every time you go to the park, somebody's going to capture their 70th card. So it'd be very cool to be there during that when it happens. That could be cool. Or maybe the glow is one of the last cards you actually have access to. And then, you know, as you're trying to yeah. capture it, all the rooftops sense. of all the shops, like, light up with, like, neon lights and stuff, which which are usually just turned off. Okay, so for the song, you can do, like, a, like, a, like a, instead of, like, having to go to a ride. I know the voice comes up, but it's fine. Mm -hmm. They can be together. <laughs> um, you can do, like, a karaoke type thing. So Aww. you don't actually have to get on the ride. You can just... Yeah. I, and that's, that's a great exactly point. exactly what I have. <laughs> <laughs> it does work for the song for sure but i like the idea of a lot of these being things you could capture even if you you know get motion sick and you don't want to take any of the rides like some of them should just be kind of cool experiences it's not called like a roller coaster park it's an amusement park each thing needs to be entertaining but it doesn't have to make you throw up yeah when i was going through i had like maybe 15 or so that i had as attractions and only like six roller coasters 
I think that shows my preferences. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Silent is one that I, I think is interesting. It's a very cool looking car, but a... it's very difficult to do as a ride. I yeah. Mean, we just we went we both went to the car captors panel at um, earlier in the con. Yeah. And they demonstrated the car and I have no idea how to make that into a ride. Yeah, <laughs> in the show it's like if you're making noise, it like pushes you outside the room. That doesn't really sound it fun. <laughs> Did someone have an idea? Yeah. So you could build one of those like sound boxes. There was one at Cosec for a while. You could walk into it and it had um uh, sound, sound dampening is <laughs> completely silent, which you wouldn't think that that's a big deal, but if you've never been in one before, there is always noise. Oh, yeah. That's cool. I like that idea. I like that idea, too. And the, um, I was thinking when I first saw this one was, um, what's the ride called? The It's at King's Island. You're in a room, and it like just launches super fast. Flight of Fear. Flight of Fear. Thank you. But those coasters where you just take off super fast, and it's like you can't even like scream because you're going so fast, <laughs> might be kind of fun. Joe wouldn't like it, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it'd be really fun. Depends. Is it high? That's all I need. <laughs> the jump is, is a card I always wanted when I was watching this show as a youngster. Because when you, when you use its ability, you can just jump super high. It's like Superman. It's really cool. Um, so this could be some kind of trampoline-ish thing. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Either some type of trampoline park or just like a bounce house. It could be something as simple as that, depending on how crazy you want to get. Or we could just do crazy trampolines all over the place. Um, the fight could be a stage show, like a martial arts kind of show. Maybe Lee mm -hmm. could lead that one because he's a martial artist. The first rule of the fight card, don't talk about the <laughs> <laughs> We don't talk about the fight card. <laughs> that is wonderful. Oh, that's really good. Um, the thunder also could kind of go with the storm. You know, seems like uh, it'd be a cool variation on anything. Maybe we could even use our, our glow rigs that we have set up. You know, we could have certain buildings flash with, with lightning and the thunder could be like the sound effect that plays. So we could have like simulated storms in the park. <laughs> That'd be cool. How about the big? <laughs> I think for the big, because the one thing I thought about with the big is like, well, with Car Captor Sakura, there's a Ferris wheel in the Christmas episode. It's like one of the memorable scenes from season one of Car Captor Sakura. Mm -hmm. So I thought that would be like a, the big would be a good way to use that is just to make a Ferris wheel for it. It's a simple. Yeah, a lot of these are, are kind of low hanging fruit or simple, yeah. but but they represent the card well. Yeah, the we sweet can. I think should be the candy place. Yeah, that's definitely like bakery or candy place. Yeah, some of these we can just knock out. Rain and mist, I didn't have any specific ideas for, but it would definitely they definitely fit into the water park thing. That sounds like a gentle water park ride. Yeah, <laughs> the mist. Yeah, the mist maybe is like the. Lazy River type ride, thank you. I could not think of that word. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, which is like a peaceful mist. Um, the freeze? Ice cream. Oh, that. yeah, yeah. Like, That's great. <laughs> I like that a lot. In Vietnam, since, since like Vietnam is kind of like a tropical climate, they actually have in one of their theme parks, they have a room where you can go in and play around and fake snow. Oh, wow. That's cool. That is that is very cool. I like that in a lot. In Ohio, that does not sound fun. <laughs> we, get, we get to do that for real. We have to do that for real. <laughs> um, the shot is really scary in the show, in my opinion. It's just a pretty chaotic power. Um, so that was one I was like a little scared of, but um, I think that just making it a really cool roller coaster, or maybe one that just shoots you straight up and then you just like, come back down or whatever i think that was the one based on the sh uh, clip in the show is that we, that we watched i was thinking more like a bumper car style thing because when you watch it in the show it kind of like ricochets all over the place and just keeps going so i was thinking kind of chaotic. like some type of bumper car to... i like that that's cool um cool so yeah we we think that having these 70 ish attractions and the ability to go through and collect all of them would be really cool especially if you have like kind of sub goals like smaller goals like maybe it's your first day there they say try to capture five cloud cards today which just means find five of these attractions and complete them like it's not a huge task but you get rewarded right you get the five different cards you get to actually keep and then maybe that unlocks new area for you later in the day or for the next time you come back in i like that a lot and someone had an idea for doing like kind of a passport sort of thing where you get like stamps for each one which is maybe even better than having everyone carry around loose cards in their hand or pocket on roller coasters, which does seem kind of dangerous. No, I think that's that sounds fun. Is there anything else you want to add to this theme park? No, I think we covered it. I mean, yeah, there's obviously some cards we didn't get to today. If you guys think of any ideas, just let us know. Yeah, we've got social media and um, 
every uh, sixth episode, I always go back and look at the previous past five and add on any additional ideas that people have put forward. So hit us up on social media if you want to, um, and we can keep adding on to this. Ooh. Yes? What would you name this part? Oh my gosh, we haven't come up with a name yet, have we? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that it needs to be all about Sakura. Like, we did a Batman episode, and we were like, it's weird to have it called Batman Land, because it's not necessarily about the person. So we ended up going with Gotham, which was easy. I don't know if they ever... What's the town they li- Ugh, I don't know. This I was is- going to say, it's, I would say it'd be more based around the cloud cards, like something around the cloud cards more than the actual like character. Yeah, Cloud yeah. Land is a pretty great idea. And because... <laughs> what'd you say? Sorry. The Park of Cloud. The Park of Cloud? Yeah, the Park of Cloud. That's good. I like that. I like that. Or like the World of Cloud. Oh, um, Cloud Country is that what's called? Cloud County. Country. I think. Country. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, country. Yeah. Because that's an actual like another world that Cloud created, right? I haven't actually I, seen that. I've just read about it. I believe you are correct. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's from Subasa. It's from Subasa. Um, it also would be kind of cool to to do like a a clamp multiverse park where this one ties in <laughs> as a part of it. Um, yeah. Random, random Chobits just wandering around. I would just move there. <laughs> yeah, that would be amazing. Brave World Anime, we do panels, and we actually have one more panel here at OhioCon today. We'll be talking about streaming anime, where you can get anime legally in the different price tiers, and just some of the different trends going around or different like hot topics. All right, and to, to close it out, thank you guys all for coming to OhioCon. I think this place is beautiful, seeing all of the people's love for their passion and their fandoms and not being afraid to like talk about it and like obsess over it, I think is a really wonderful thing about pop culture and humanity and it's all amazing. And thank you very much to Joe for being here because if it wasn't for him, this would be super boring. Um, <laughs> and also wouldn't have gotten in depth into the actual lore of the series. So thank you, Joe. Thank you, OhioCon. Great job. <laughs> wonderful. And it's 2, 12.29, so you have about one minute to do whatever you want and then get out. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>